Hello everyone and welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be trying something extremely different. We're going to take a level 3 painting which is an advanced painting and I'm going to show you how with a few lines in the project you can take this to a level 1 project so that no matter what your skill level is, no matter how many different things that have to be done, you can turn a painting into something beautiful. And before I start, I just want to say this. The picture you're about to see is a level three painting, advanced. It's actually a banana boat. There's a lot of elements in it. There's a black background, there's a shadow. The painting we're going to do today is not necessarily for advanced individuals, although you could have fun doing it. This one is for what I want to call a level one for my residents who reside in senior communities who have a little bit difficulty seeing, who don't really want to spend a lot of time on a project but yet want to end up with something beautiful. This project is dedicated to you. I will show in a future video how you can do the level three advanced painting of this very same project. But today, this is for my residents. So what I'd like to do is show you what the picture look like after I show you the equipment that you get when you buy a paint and peel kit, then I'll explain the subtle difference in how this particular paint and peel is set up for my group. My group. Okay, first of all, you get a very nice pack of brushes to, that come with a variety of different shapes and sizes. And for this project, you probably only need two, a flat and a pointed, to do the entire project. We give you one paper towel, but I strongly suggest that you keep a few. And I like to keep mine folded instead of crumpling up as I clean my brushes off. We give you a plastic apron to protect your clothing. We provide you with the colors for today's project, which is red, blue, white, sienna, and a burnt umber. Now I just wanna stress that even though you're gonna see that I have quite a bit of color on my plate, you're not even gonna be using half that much to paint this project. Okay, here are my colors. We're basically going to show you that, again, I put out a lot so you can see them, but we're not even going to be using half this amount. Now to take a look at the picture. This is the painting we're going to do today, and I just want to clarify. We're not doing the shadow. We're not playing, painting the black background, and we will not be putting in this banana. We're going to pretty much be making an ice cream boat that's just going to have some whipped cream, cherries, lots of syrup dripping down into this bowl, which we're going to make slightly differently for this particular project, but we're still going to add a lot of the elements that you see inside. So here's how I prepared the canvas for my residence. We provide you with a peel that covers the entire background. The reason for this peel shape is so that when they paint inside, no matter what happens, when we peel it away, they'll get a nice structured shape because a lot of my residents, they complain about not having steady hands and I always let them use mine. But for this project, this will help to steady anything that you do on or about on the edges. So you're not gonna be tripping into the background. That's one reason. Second thing I've done is I've taken a watercolor pencil and I've created some lines to show where each section is broken down for them to easily be able to add colors and highlights onto the painting. So again, to help guide them for visual impairments. So this again is not a project necessarily for an advanced painter, but I think you're gonna be very pleased and satisfied with the end results. So without further ado, let's get down to basics. I have off to my right, my trusty broken down little set of brushes that I like to use during my projects. They've helped me paint a lot of real life paintings as well as a lot of paintings in this video. What I'm gonna do first is we're gonna just take this pointed brush, this round pointed brush, and we're gonna put a little red on it and we're gonna paint the cherries. Now, as I pointed out, there are stop lines. The stop lines are there to show you where to stop. So for example, if you take and draw right over this line, and you can draw right over this one, and you can just paint right along this one, 
Now you have the cherries shape that you need. And just to over extend it, I'm going to paint past the line purposely. Just to show you that none of this will be showing up. This will be peeled away. And on that note, now we're just going to work. And I will no longer stress that point. As it's already been stated. That the gray is there to act as a blocking agent in reverse of what we normally do. Now that's not to say that my residents are not capable of painting the other way. They most certainly are. But there are some groups who have a little bit of a different situation working for them as they've aged. Where some of them have a slight case of dementia. Or some of them have Alzheimer's. Or some of them even have shaky hands. Okay, so now we have those three cherries. There's one more cherry down here. So let's take the brush. We just go right along the outline. It doesn't matter if you extend it a little bit. The idea is just to help guide you. And now we'll paint in cherry number four. Okay, you see how easy that is? Now we have four cherries already painted. We'll do the stems after we remove the peel in this case. Had this been the black, we could proceed on. So now, what I'm gonna do is, we're literally gonna be breaking this painting down into different um, sections. So rather than have you paint every little section, you could jump right here and put the red syrup, but instead I'm going to take you downward and we'll get back to this. So let's clean up our brush, roll it around on the paper towel, and the next color we're going to pick up is some sienna. Now this sienna is going to outline each one of these. And when people say outline, what do you mean? Like you see the shape? That's the outline. So if you take the brush and literally drag it right along the edge, like so, you will get an outline. The key is to work on the white, but you can again touch the gray. You see, I'm going right over the lines that we put down here for you. Or should I say for them? And we're going to just outline each one of these. Simple as that. Wish there was a way I could speed this up, but I really like working in real time. And I don't happen to have a cinematographer, so I work from a, a downward angle. Uh, maybe as life gets better for me, we'll have someone to be able to zoom in, maybe close-ups. But for right now, we're, we're fine. So I'm just going around the edges. Holding the brush like a pencil. Because the canvas is pretty dry, I'm resting my entire hand. Sometimes I use my pinky, but not in this instance, not yet. I'm just going to put a little lavish color right over the line. See how we're just outlining each one of these? Just to give the feeling that this whipped cream has some color in it. Because it's art. We're not really doing real life, but it's still going to look, ooh, delicious. I'm going to just put some lavish color. See how I just keep dipping? And I just go and blend that softly. Okay, so now we have our, our I don't know what we want to call this. The, the whipped cream has a little bit of um, syrup on it. Now you want to come inside here and just take the brush and just make a few little little lines inside just to give some color inside. And then we're gonna come with another color in here to really dress it up. This is just to give a little bit more mm to the, to the whole whipped cream part. Now we're gonna clean off the brush. Now for this, I need you to understand that blue is such a strong color and we don't want it that deep. So I'm literally gonna take my brush and get a little point. See that little bit? Go inside, grab a little bit of white, stir that up till I get a nice light blue. Now we're going to put in some of that cool, chill lines. And for that, you just want to take the brush and you just want to make a few little marks. They don't have to be any particular way. 
almost like we put in the the syrup you could just kind of come in and add some blue light blue just like this just a few little spots just going to mix up a little bit more I already showed you how so i'm not doing anything any different and then i'm going to come over here and just just kind of add some in all three and it doesn't matter how many but keep them very random very sparing don't try to go too thought in this is not necessary you just add in some color to give it a little bit of a feeling of coolness, of frost, of something more going on than just a white open space. There, that's good enough. Those marks are fine. You could always doctor them up, but we're gonna leave it. Now going right back into it, we're gonna start with this one. Now this you have to be careful of because the shape is here and people have a tendency to paint inside here. So taking this pointed brush again, trace the line. If you trace the line, you'll see it better because then you'll see where you shouldn't go and where you should go. This one I like to call, this first one is almost the shape of the letter M. It's kind of a weird M, but it's kind of more like a shape of an M than anything else. And you see how I'm stopping right at the top of that other line because every line is a stop line. So that line is saying, don't go past me. For this one right here, we could go like this, go right to the edge. There, just one more, one more side, which is gonna be joining to the other color, but for right now, it's all about the red. Just gonna get this in here. Now, now that we have our shape, you can continue using the pointed brush. I'm going to go to a slightly larger round pointed brush, my trusty broken down brush, because I want to quickly block this in for you so we don't have to spend all day here. So I'm just going to come with the color, and now I'm just going to go inside. Right in between the lines, I'm going to start on one side and work my way around because now I see exactly where the juice or the syrup is. So I'm just gonna fill it. It's already beginning to look good, see? Quick, easy, to the point. Now I've already had some residents to paint this. I don't happen to have any of their actual paintings with me, but I do have some photographs. But I'm not gonna be able to share them with you today. Maybe on another page in my website, I will. So you can see what it looks like. So now, it doesn't matter if you take out some of the one on the bottom, because it's ice cream. Ice cream tends to blend together, but we do have color there in case. So now I'm just gonna go to the last part. But you see how easy it was to outline it, not go inside, but actually go where the icing really is Look at what we got here. See? Look at what we got here. Nice. Juicy. And we'll highlight and add some other values later. But right now, we just want to block this in. Come right down here. Block this in. Done. So now, we have our red syrup. The next syrup is not a tricky one, but it's the umber. Now, umber is one of those colors where you, you sometimes have to use it more than once, like layering it over and over. But we're going to do it one time and then call it the end. So I know that right here it stops. So I'm just going to trace off again the umber color so that I'll see it clearer and know exactly where to paint. There's a little bit of a drip that goes like that. Now, all I'm doing again not taking up a lot of your time is just quickly outlining the chocolate syrup, which is the umber color. And it may not come off at the first pass as dark as I want it to be. And people have a tendency to keep painting over and over while it's wet. Sometimes you just want to cover it, let it dry, and then add another layer on top of it because it'll stick better. That's the beauty of acrylic paint. 
Now, even though this is right next to the red, I'm still gonna take my pointed brush and draw me a line right along the outside so that when I come in with my other brush and start stroking, I don't pick up too much of that red to go inside. So I'm still gonna do this. And I'm gonna put a line at my bottoms because now we have this other shape. And again, we're not going inside. We're going on the outside. So you see the two lines you're gonna be painting in between. I'm gonna go from left to right using the same method I did before with the red. I'm gonna put it on my other number six round brush. And I'm just gonna come in here and start painting one area at a time. It looks really good, but it's gonna get even better when I hit it the second time. And what do I mean? I'm just gonna do that and keep moving. I'm not gonna go back and right now try to paint in it. I'm just putting in some color. I'll leave it and I'll come back later. And I promise you when I paint it a second time or maybe even a third, but it'll be a second and that should be enough. It will darken itself for me because I want a nice Hershey's chocolate. Shouldn't even give any props to them. They're not helping me here. So we're just going to say chocolate. Whatever chocolate is best for you. Okay, so now we're just going to go here. That is really four pieces. So I'm just, I'm on the third one right now. But you see how easy it is once you make those lines and you paint in between them and you follow what I'm saying as far as not going back over it but just layering in the color and moving on because you'll come back and you'll add another layer and it'll be a lot better than if you sat here and kept going over and over. It's not going to do anything. Wet paint, no matter what you're using and you continually paint over wet paint, you get nothing, nothing darker. You think you do, but you don't. So now I'm going to come over here and put in this last little piece. And then we're going to add the last element of syrup. And we're moving on. And see how we just, we're moving down. Okay, let me clean off my brush. Always clean up your equipment. Have it ready for the next thing. And last but not least, this last little shape is going to be some more of this syrup, which is the sienna color. So I'm just going to pick some up of the sienna. And I'm gonna do the usual outline. Now, the outline, some of you say, well, I'm gonna pass on that. And that's great if you have that level of vision. But again, for my residents, sometimes it's a little bit easier if someone helps them with the line work or they help themselves with this line work. And then they're able to clearly see where to go, which helps tremendously so that they don't make any type of oopses. But it's ice cream, so technically you can't make a mistake. Syrup goes any kind of way. So even if you chose to ignore my lines and make your own, it's fine. It's fine. I know when I'm preparing ice cream, it never turns out the same. It drips anywhere it wants to, and I use a lot of different toppings when I'm allowed to. So... Here we go. Just putting in the lines, blocking off the bottoms, okay, which is technically here, but it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna add some different some lines over here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So now I'm gonna go into my rounded brush that I cleaned off and it's sitting here waiting for me. I don't have to clean it. I'm gonna go in here and start putting in some of this syrup. And the same rule applies. Just always think coverage. Just cover first. If you don't like how it looks, let it dry up a little bit and come back. But the last thing you wanna do is leave really thick paint thinking that's gonna make it darker because it's just gonna take that much longer to dry. And because it's syrup, it's okay if you have the brush stroke lines like that, but you don't wanna leave big globs in the beginning because you just want to try and keep working. You can detail stuff much later. So here I'm just going to come in, block this in. And don't worry about those lines at the bottom. We're about to take care of that right now. 
Okay, so now, now we have all of our syrups. So we have our cherries, we have our whipped cream, we have our syrups. I'm gonna clean off our brush. Now we're gonna work on this bowl. Now this is where you have to take some artistic license. And it's important to understand that there'll be some drippage of this syrup coming into the glass, but we first need to establish the glass. So to do that, I'm gonna take my rounded brush here with some white and a touch of blue, because I wanna make a nice light blue. And all I wanna do now is literally trace right along the edge. And we're gonna darken some of this up later, but right now I just need to establish the cool color. So I'm gonna just take this light blue, very, very light blue, and I'm just gonna go and trace around my, my, my dish. Because when I peel it up, I need to be able to see the dish in this case because there's not gonna be any black background. So by adding this color, and it's light enough, other colors can go on and around it, which is what I need later. But right now I'm just trying to just quickly go around the dish like that. See, now I have a line. That line, no matter what, will represent my bowl. Now I'm gonna take some white with that light blue color and I'm gonna purposely go in here and soften the edges. I'm gonna leave the tips, but I'm going inside just to soften up the edges and to add a little coloration so that it'll even be seen better. See, so now we have coloration. So now I'm gonna switch, let me clean my brush. We have some coloration. Now I'm gonna take my pointed brush and we're gonna kind of exaggerate. Now we're gonna take just dark blue with a touch, touch of white. We want it more blue now. And I'm gonna say maybe, maybe over here there's a little bit of a frosty value of blue that's just sitting in this corner. I'm gonna do some random stuff now. And then maybe right along some of the edge here, you know, there's some, some blue in between before the syrup comes in, like that's running like that. I'm just having fun now. Now I'm just gonna be adding some values. And then maybe even right underneath here is a little bit more of a bluish value. Because I'm kind of trying to give a, an indication, a feeling, a representation that this is, is really cool because of all that ice cream. It's, it's like, this is, this is me using these little marks to show coolness. That the, the glass itself or the dish itself has kind of cooled down because of all of that ice cream in it. So now let's go back over to this other side, over here near the edge. Maybe it's a little band of dark blue. I know this doesn't make any sense. This, this looks so ridiculous right now. I get it, I get it, I get it. And any time you make it too much, you could always take a little white and soften it. But I'm gonna leave that for right now. Cause now I'm gonna go in and maybe, Maybe I'll even make a few little, just because I want to. I'm gonna take and maybe right along the edges here, just, just have a little bit darker value of the blue. Just right along where I put some of those blue lines, maybe right at the edges here, like that. Okay, now let's look at the syrup. Now we're gonna bring some of the red in, but we need to respect the line. So we're gonna take some red, for example, where our red syrup is. We're gonna go and make a line right underneath it, just a line like that, just a little line like that. And then maybe underneath here, there's some syrup that's kind of seeped inside the, the dish. So over here, we have a little line. Then down here, we have a little bit of red that's seeped down underneath. Now, if you can look at this, you see that line up there represents the dish. This other line is sort of reflective and then this little one shows more drippage. So let's just go here and let's just make this one so you can see that it actually dripped in the shape. 
like that. You can still add a little line here if you want. See, this is underneath, this is inside the glass. So we're technically no longer painting on the blue. Now we're pretending this stuff is dripping inside. So let me clean off my brush and let's go into some of this umber. And don't forget, we're gonna come back and add another value. But until then, we're gonna still pretend that this color is just dripping down like this. Who knows? That's a good shape. We can leave some of it stopped right at the top. It doesn't all have to drip in just yet, you know, but we could kind of play around a little bit like that. See, those little breaks are helping the eye see that there is some kind of a separation between the outside and the inside by not coming over the line but going just below it just below the glass where the glass is see now we got this one maybe this is dripping all over here like this who knows and maybe this one is just dripping a little bit and this one is actually curled up like that now let's take some of this color that we have here this this kind of juicy color because maybe some of it drip down from there and maybe some of it actually came on this side of the glass and maybe there's a little over here now we just we're just using this to add some color into our glass jar let's do the same thing with a little red now the red is strong so we don't need a whole lot of it but maybe there's a few little spots of red that's kind of dripped down and, and kind of reflecting inside for the chocolate, we don't have to do so much. Let's take a little bit of white with this sienna color. Mix it so that it's really, 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 really light. And maybe in the ice cream itself, there's just a shadow of some of this stuff that was up here that kind of dripped down into the in-betweens. So you see, I'm not painting it solid, but I'm kind of scrubbing and giving a little color. And of course, over here, there might be a lot more because we got the, we got that color and we also have it coming from the top. And then maybe we'll take some of that light color and just shadow down in here in our glass dish just to give it some more flavor. So now we have that. So now let's go back to our chocolate as promised because we're almost done now. So now we're going to take some more of the umber. And we're going to paint right over what we did. Now, I want to stop for a second after I do just a few strokes. Okay. See the difference between that and this? This is layered on top. This is not thick paint. This is literally layered right on the top. I'm just painting over it one more time. And see how it's given a much stronger, darker, richer value. I just want to say this because I have to. You can do this all day long. You can just let it dry, go darker, let it dry, go darker, let it dry, go darker. But for purposes of this video, we're only going to paint it just one more time so that you could understand the principle behind how this works. Glazing, layering putting on top, whatever you want to call it. Yes, we will go back down there. But remember, this is drying. So we're working here and we'll go back there. It's like math. Everything has an order of operation. So now we'll come here, put this little bit in. See how much richer that looks? You could do it with the red. You could do it with the sienna. But we're not. Now we're going to add a little bit here. And then I might go in and soften a little bit or even do some of my cherry a little bit just because I want to give everything a little bit more time to set up just gonna go over this with a little bit more chocolate there how does that look not bad right now we're gonna take our red and we're gonna take the red and we're just gonna add a little bit of red on a few sides maybe like so just to kind of Leave a little light area. See how it's giving contrast. I'm just making a kind of a half circle paint job, not really focusing on too much. Just to leave some of it open on the other side. 
And now with that, let's add a little bit of flavor. So for the red one, we're going to pick up the umber. With that umber, we're just going to add a little shadow right under here. Just a little line. Take some more umber. Maybe some of it's shadowing on part of this drip right here. Maybe down here. Maybe a little bit over here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. See how I'm not doing a lot. I'm just doing touches. Maybe there's a little shadow here. Maybe there's a little bit coming down like that. We'll skip that one. We'll come over here. We'll grab just some sienna again. And maybe we'll just kind of add a little outline flavor. Just a few little darker markings of the sienna. Not to paint it over, but just to give that. We're going to come back to this. Trust me, we will. Now we're going to tap into a little white. And we're going to add a little highlight on the cherry right there. Right there. Right there. And maybe right there. And because that umber works so well, maybe we'll pick up just a little bit of umber. And we'll add a little shadow in our cherry right here. Just with the umber. See, I'm just making some little strokes. Maybe there's something over here. Like that. I'm just giving a little accent. Just a touch. And I'm gone. I'm not painting a lot. I'm just throwing in a little shape. And I'm leaving it. Just to act as shadow. Now, remember I said I was coming back here? We are. Let's pick up some white. And maybe on the turn of the red... In a few areas, there's some red highlight that's coming down. These are just extra things. You don't have to do these. They're not necessary. I just find it, it acts as nice accent. Maybe there's a little white here. Maybe there's a little white on this one. These are little lines. We're just making little lines. We're not going too deep, too detailed. And then maybe even on the Sienna, we could just add a few there. That just gives the whole thing a little bit of flavor. See? Not bad, right? I like it. But I'm thinking that maybe I'll take this flat brush with a little bit of white, a touch of blue, because I really want to make sure that when I peel this up, I get a nice blue shape. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a value around the edges just to give the look as if there's a nice value of blue that's around the edge of my glass. Because remember, this is the only thing that's going to show this up. So now I'm just taking this opportunity to darken just a little bit more, just a touch. Be very careful here or be brave and leave it like you had it. But I'm just going to go with a little bit of value just around the edges. Just kind of soften this up a little bit. Because I really want this to stand out. Okay. Our painting's almost done. Two more things left to do. One is to pull the peel up so you can see the whole ice cream bowl. And then the other is to add some stems. So let me clean off my brush. Move it to the side. Gonna take my spatula, grab a little edge, get something going, peel it away. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that ice cream. As promised. See? As promised. Now we're just gonna take our pointed brush. I'm going to roll it around. Let me show you how I'm going to do it because a lot of people dip straight in. But I go right to the edge here and I just roll it around so I can get the tip to stay pointy but yet get color on it. Because now what I want to do is go right into the cherry and just pull me a stem. And you see I'm not going... Ch -ch -ch -ch. I'm just pulling. I'm just driving. Let's say that up here I grab it and I kind of turn like that. This one, I want it to go the opposite direction. So I'll grab it and I'll just pull it like that. And then I'll just do the last one, maybe the same direction. I just grab it 
I'm working upside down, so please excuse me. And bam. There. There's my finished painting. And like I said, this painting isn't really for an advanced person. However, you can learn a lot from this. You can get a lot out of this. But the fact that this is for residents who are averaging in age between 78 and 101, for them to be able to paint this project is instant gratification. It, it just sends all kind of endorphins through the body, through the mind, and they look forward to coming the next time. My memory care, my dementia patients, who I paint with, they may have flawed memory on a lot of different things. They remember their families and they remember certain events in their lives, so don't, don't underestimate them. But they definitely remember me because of the painting. Not me personally, but when they see me, they get excited and they say, oh, we're getting ready to create something. I can't wait to see what we're about to do. This is a great way to instill a positive energy in the minds of our residents to beginners to intermediates, even advanced painters, so that you can feel that sense of accomplishment. You could have easily, before you put the stems, traced out black around everything, painted the canvas black, did the shadow under here, and then pulled the cherry stem. So again, this is just a great way. Peel Off is such a great product and it's not because I created it or invented it. It's because I'm sharing it. It's available for you. All you have to do is go to peeloff.com, P-E-I-L-O-F-F.com on your web browser to see all the different kits and the different levels that we have. You can stay here on YouTube, peeloff.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And anytime a new video comes out, you'll be alerted and you can take a look at it. And you can take a shot at it from there. You can buy the kits and paint along with the video. You can take the kits and create variations of what you see in the videos just by you experimenting and exploring. So when I tell you there's no limit to what Peel Off can do, I'm not just saying it as the owner, operator. I'm saying it as an artist. It is a great way for you to feel that sense of, of artistic creation. I like to say, let's just have some fun, push around a few colors, and be creative as we did here today. So until next time, everyone take care. Have a great day until our next video, which will be very, very soon. Bye-bye.